Hello and welcome to another video by ATC. This is part 2 of air conditioning system lesson. If you haven't already watched part 1, then please click on the link above to watch part 1 and then proceed with this video. In part 1 of the video, we learned about basics of air conditioning system overview, function of packs, pack operation, cooling process, and air cycle machine. In this video, we will learn about air conditioning distribution, zone temperature control, recirculation system, and equipment cooling system. Air from the packs is delivered at one constant, fairly cold temperature. This temperature is mostly unsuitable for the comfort of passengers and flight crew. Therefore, some form of warmer air must be mixed into the conditioned pack air. This warm air is known as trim air because it trims the pack air temperature to make it more comfortable. The trim air pressure is regulated for the flight deck, forward passenger cabin and aft passenger cabin. It may also be shut off by trim air switch in the air conditioning panel which has following positions. On the trim air pressure regulated shutoff valve or PRSOV opens and each individual cabin zone trim air valve is enabled. Off. The trim air PRSOV closed and each individual cabin zone trim air valve is disabled. Trim air is extracted from bleed air that passes through the flow control valve and is ducted toward three trim air valves, one each each cabin zone. In simple terms, the pack delivers one air temperature according to the coldest cabin zone. Trim air heats up the other two cabin zones to increase their temperature to the desired automatic temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. Moving on. Air in flight deck is 100% fresh air from the left air conditioning pack. Air in the forward and aft passenger cabin is a mixture of fresh air from right air conditioning pack, the mix manifold, and a certain amount of air that is recirculated within the cabin. If the left pack become inoperative, the flight deck automatically receives conditioned air from the right pack. Flight deck temperature may be selected different than passenger cabin with the count tab temperature selector that has two positions. Auto Temperature is automatically controlled. If the selector is rotated towards C or W, which are cool and warm respectively, manual temperature control is engaged. Off. The flight deck trim air valve is closed and the temperature control produces air to supply a 24 degree Celsius demand. The forward and aft passenger compartments are supplied with air from the mixed manifold. From the mixed manifold, conditioned air flows through rising ducts and side walls to an overhead distribution duct that effectively distributes air symmetrically in the cabin. The passenger cabin compartment's temperature may also be controlled with the related forward and aft cabin temperature selectors. These have same positions as the cont cab selector. Zone Temperature Control All three cabin selectors have a range that is approximately 18 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. They are also associated to three zone temp lights that illuminates when there is a forward or aft cabin duct temperature overheat or there is a control cabin duct temperature overheat or there is a failure of flight deck primary and standby temperature controls. If both the primary and standby temperature control fails for the same pack, the same alerts will display and the pack will still continue to operate but without any form of temperature control. When the condition that caused the pack light to illuminate has been corrected, the trip reset switch must be pressed in the air conditioning overhead panel to bring the system back to normal operation. If all temperature selectors are positioned off, the pack controls will cause the left pack to maintain a fixed temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and the right pack to maintain 18 degrees Celsius as measured at the pack temperature sensor. Since 
The flight deck requires only a fraction of the air supply provided by the left pack. Most of the left pack output is routed to the mix manifold. Conditioned air for the flight deck branches into several risers which end at the floor, ceiling and the foot levels outlet. Air diffusers on the floor under each seat delivers continuous air flow as long as the manifold is pressurized. Overhead diffusers are located on the flight deck ceiling, above and aft of number 3 windows. Each of these outlets can be opened or closed, as desired by turning a slotted adjusting screw. There is also a dual purpose valve behind the rudder pedal of each pilot. These valves provide air for warming the pilot's feet and for defogging the inside of the number 1 windshields. Each valve is controlled by knobs located on the captain's and first officer's panel. Passenger Cabin The passenger cabin air supply distribution system consists of mixed manifold, sidewall risers and an overhead distribution duct. Sidewall risers go up the right and left wall of the passenger cabin to supply air to the overhead distribution duct. The overhead distribution duct routes conditioned air to passenger cabin. It extends from the forward to the aft end of the ceiling along the airplane center line and also supplies the side wall diffusers. The recirculation system supplies air for ventilation to the passenger's cabin by collecting cabin air and mixing it with pack air in the main distribution manifold. The whole recirculation system's objective is to reduce the demand for fresh air from the pneumatic system or engine bleed system and from the air conditioning packs. All the recirculated air is pulled through an air filter to remove very small particles, bacteria and microorganisms. Recirculation is achieved with a left and a right recirculation fan. These are operated with the left and right recirculation fan switches in the air conditioning panel. These switches have the following positions. Off. The recirculation fans are off. Auto. The recirculation fans are controlled automatically according to the following logic. Auto. In auto, recirculation operations has two modes ground and in flight. On the ground, the recirculation fan operates constantly and if both air conditioning packs switches are high, the left recirculation fan operates too. During flight, the left and right recirculation fans operate while both air conditioning packs are operative. Air from both fans passes through a recirculation fan check valve that prevents any form of leakage or loss of conditioned air back into the mix manifold from the recirculation system. Another process is the ventilation system. As I mentioned earlier in the part 1 of this video, the ventilation system removes unpleasant air from both the galleys and lavatories in the passenger cabin. By creating a pressure differential, air always flows from high to low pressure area, thus creating a form of suction. The ventilation system takes advantage of this principle and ducts all the unpleasant air out of the airplane. Equipment Cooling System Electronic equipment near the flight deck and electronic and electrical bay can get very very hot sometimes. Because these systems are important, for example present data on the flight crew's display units, they must be kept cool and free from the risk of overheating. For this purpose, the air conditioning system has also an equipment cooling system designed to remove that heat from the electronic components near both the flight deck and the electronic equipment bay located slightly aft and under of the flight deck. The equipment cooling system is simply made up of an air supply system that takes cool air to the electronic equipment and an air exhaust system that removes the warm air. As a protection mechanism, both the supply an exhaust system contains two fans respectively, normal and alternate fan. The related fans are operated with the equipment cooling supply or the exhaust switches located in the forward overhead panel. Both switches have the following positions, normal. 
Normal supply exhaust fans are operational. Alternate. The alternate supply exhaust fans have been activated. How does one know when to switch between both fan types for either the supply or exhaust system? The answer is when the off light below each switch is illuminates. This light comes on to alert that there is a little or no airflow from the selected fan for either supply or exhaust. When the off light comes on for both fans, the airplane electrical system must be partly shut down to reduce the electric load and therefore bring the equipment temperature down. Together with the off light, a master caution is presented along with the overhead light. The presence of a master caution may surprise you. But keep in mind that if the equipment is left to overheat, it could potentially start a fire on the flight deck. This is one of the worst emergencies that can happen on an airliner, as an incapacitated pilot can exactly operate the aircraft safely, rendering all the course of actions useless. The overboard exhaust valve lets exhaust air go overboard when the airplane is on the ground. In flight, the exhaust air adds to the heat in the forward cargo compartment. A check valve isolates the exhaust air from the cargo compartment when the airplane is in the air and the overboard exhaust valve is open. Smoke override mode When the air crew carry out the forward cargo fire checklist, they turn off the recirculation fans and select high flow for the packs. This puts the equipment cooling system into smoke override mode. The overboard exhaust valve opens and a check valve prevents air from forward cargo area from being vented.